How's the workout? <sighs> that was pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, it was man. good. It was really good. Yeah, because it's like every lower body session for the last three weeks, I've been sore from it. I'm sore right now. Same, hey. Were you are you are Those too? stairs? Oh, damn. Someone when get I an elevator. Yeah, when I seen how many there were, I just looked up from the bottom and I'm like, oh, this is going to hurt. That's right. <laughs> but you, the reason I... Because it's been three or so years since me and mm. Christian, we drove all the way from here to Mafra, yep. which is nearly three hours, which is what you did today. Yes. Right? So we reversed it. <laughs> and then from there to today you just popped up on my instagram uh like notification i'm like jacob weatherly i know that name yeah right and it's been so long since talked seen each other or even like you popped up on my radar so i'm like man what's this guy doing and then immediately as soon as i saw your instagram bio i read because um for those who want to know it's jacob underscore weatherly it's in the description i'll put it there for you um but I saw your description. You said, I guide men on how they can truly be, uh, uh, can be truly strong individuals so they can live fulfilling, confident, and accomplished lives. And I'm like, this is a guy I want to talk to. Yeah. Because I don't think that was the same guy that we met three no or whatever years ago. Way. Yeah. How, what has that transformation been like? Because I think when I read that, I'm like, there is a huge disconnect between a boy to become a man. Absolutely. Right? The female, look, there's, I think females have their own disconnect as well, but I think there's a clear distinction of a, of a girl becoming a female, which is marked by a, the menstrual cycle. It's a mm. physical, somatic experience yep. to become a woman. You are now a woman, mm. historically, they'll tell. But boy to man... Yeah, there's no set like time in a boy's life mm-hmm. where he has that sort of exterior notification that he's now a man right see with like you said with with girls they have the menstrual cycle does that really mean that they've become a woman though and that's a great point yeah not necessarily yeah whereas with with boys we don't have that uh we don't have that external you know that external notification of Mm -hmm. okay maybe it's time that we actually start becoming a man whereas with girls maybe this is the case i'm not sure i don't dive into that field of work with girls they their menstrual cycle starts and then maybe something goes off in their head for them to say, okay, now it's time to become a woman. Well, putting, look, obviously neither as a females, we could only speak from an experience of, of like empirical and working with them and knowing them. Right. But just Mm. speaking predominantly about boys and men right now, I, what I've dived into, have you, are you familiar with Elliot Hulse? Yes. Right. So you sound like you like him. You <laughs> yeah. resonate with the stuff he yeah, talks about. For sure. He talks about this stuff and he makes great points about, well, historically, there will be rites of passage mm-hmm. for boys to become men. They would go off and have to perform feats of strength, feats of whatever, hunting, yeah. um, proving themselves to their tribe, etc., etc. Now, it's gone. Yeah, like we, like we don't, I feel like we don't look back at tribal times enough now, mm. but everything that we do even today can be traced back to tribal times. Like we're still a tribal society deep down. Mm. Like we, and like everyone loves that sense of community. And yeah, like you said, with boys becoming men, there's no, yeah, there's no pathway for them at the moment. So, and I was actually pulling because I'm, I'm making I'm making a lot of notes and, and like mm. I'm kind of like planning in my um, in my head about a future uh, camp in the way in the way Elliot Hulse does, but he does a what's called a grounding camp. He does mm. it for for older, usually adult men, yep. right? I'm like, okay, how do we start them younger? How do we how do we positively influence these young boys so then they don't? I mean, I looked at your last post and I think like, what a great last post, like. Being a man isn't spending every Saturday with the boys playing video games, constantly jacking off daily, right? Mm. I'm like, what a timely post, right? Right? <laughs> what What does that kind of mean? You want to like elaborate on that? Yeah, like I feel like in like society now, there's a lot of it's not stigma, but I mean, through through high school and for boys in like the 18, 19, 20 year old range. Like, and this comes back to tribal as well. Like they, they love the sense of a group and they get the group and then it's a group of boys. So then they, they hold on to that. And I feel like they hold on to that through all of their early twenties. And then 
of course there's no like there's no pathways for boys to become men like you said Elliot Hulse has has these camps where boys enter and then men leave mm. whereas we don't have that for for boys now like mm. there's nothing there's social media and video games so mm. they get stuck playing video games all the time and then they watch porn and they jack off daily because they have no social skills it's funny not funny but coincidental that you bring off we bring up like um like a, a set people get like a sexual addiction to porn i talked about mm. this with my second guest in, in kind of more a joking way but it's like a serious thing oh like porn 100%. addiction it right? is for sure like i mean i don't know how common it is i don't know the stats but yeah. like i'm gonna say that it, it it is fairly common especially like i um, don't know about uh older men but like especially with young men like teenagers and early 20s mm. i could say it's pretty common for sure yeah j- just based off speaking to people mm. personally i've never experienced it but you can see how something like that can distort reality for sure yeah and like the same with um gaming i guess right. a gaming addiction would fall in the same category like they spend I mean, boys spend hours playing video games, you know, seven, eight, nine hours a day just playing video games and they, like, they don't do anything with their life. Is that something you've dipped your toe into? Like, either of those things throughout your, your youth? Like, addictions? Video, in, video in games, for sure. Yeah. Like, I would come home from, especially in, like, year 11 and 12. Mm-hmm. And then even, like, recently, I've just cut it completely out. Like, I it just, I don't do it anymore. Because I took a really good look at myself and I was like, cool, like if I'm going to be guiding these men, like I need to step into yeah. who I am as a man. Yeah. And I was like, well, fuck, I'm still playing video games. I'm like men, when, when you think of a man, like men don't play video games, boys play video games. And that's, that's interesting. I think um, it's interesting how like that hobby and action of playing video games, it is, it seems like I think it's, it, is creating a stigma around it, but I think fairly so in a way because mm. it can be self-destructive. Yeah, right. 100%. It can take up huge amounts of your time. It can distract you from the reality you're living in and a whole bunch of cascade of things. But I think on, on, on the flip side, positive, like it's a crazy world to now be able to, I think yeah. you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, like, I mean, the skills to play video game I mean, like if we're talking reaction times and the ability to strategize and things like that, for sure. Like, I don't know how far, I don't know how deep video gaming goes, but they have competitions like across the world now. People make millions of dollars. Yeah? You didn't hear about this? Oh my goodness. People make bank. EA Sports, have you heard of EA Sports? Yeah, yeah. Like I know they have um, the the esports competition for like Formula One and that's like a huge competition yep like they have teams like that are down from like the actual formula one teams for these gamers it's nuts it is nuts and these uh like these gaming competitions are rivaling in some ways actual sporting events wow unbelievable and okay i'm just trying to find some stats here um we're talking about jesus i'm looking at Hundreds of millions. Look, have you heard of a, a game? Okay, I'm looking at esports uh, top gaming awarded prize money. Number one is Dota 2. That's a lot of numbers I'm looking at right now. This is 200 plus million dollars over 3,500 players and 1,300 tournaments. Wow. Okay. That's a huge amount of money. But I'm trying to find like individuals because there are some people out there making serious money. And as I find it, I'm like, it's now can be like, okay, little Johnny in the basement playing video games all day. Okay, what can we do with this now? Can we facilitate mm. a healthy lifestyle and, and a career? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you can feed your family, feed yourself. Um, it's and a good then, point. Like if you, if you don't get a grip on it early, like I feel like it can go down that addiction for path. Sure, for, for sure. sure. It's a good point though. Like I've never looked at it. I've never looked at it that way. If you can, if you can sort of guide on the right path and like, I mean, guide them into competitions where they're making all this money, right? I mean, there's got to be some benefits if it, along benefits with it, alongside with, you know, a, a big focus on their health as well, for sure. Like, I, I can't see any benefits of sitting down for eight hours, glued to a screen, unless there's 
a huge upside. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And look, we're talking about top one percent, top point five percent. Yeah, right of the people who do this and they have to dedicate huge amounts of time. But I think one of the best investments I've made for my productivity and just general health mm. is getting a standing desk. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever seen yeah, or, I've seen this. used yeah. them before? 100%, they're good for sure. Like we're sitting now, we'll be sitting for like a few hours, mm. all right? It's not the greatest. Yeah. But if you can keep movement variability in your day, you can kind of curb the detriment, right? Mm. Like we just worked out for two hours. Yeah, for sure. Sit down for a couple hours. You got a long drive home. But yeah. like things like, all right, can we stop over halfway and do some mo mobility? Yeah, absolutely. Right. But the point about video games, I think it gets now a bit unfairly vilified uh, for the fact that you look, there, there are outlets for people, mm. right, to be successful in them. And then what was the other thing? So we talk about that addiction, porn addiction. These kids are getting uh, addicted to these things. How do we, how do we curb that? Mm. If you could wave a magic wand, and kind of be the king of the world for a day, hmm, it's a good question. Like, I definitely think with with that huge upside, focusing on health as well. I mean, if we take out that top zero point five to one percent, and we focus on the other ninety nine percent, yeah. Yep. I mean, the, the, across the board with anything, I think the world needs to focus a lot more on health. Like stats on obesity and everything have got out of hand. Like yeah. there's no doubting that at all. Yeah. And if we're just focusing on gamers, then I mean, if they're sitting down for long periods of day, there definitely needs to be a big focus on health. And I mean, the, the awareness is there. Like people know. People know should, what to do. Yeah, people know what to do. They just don't fucking do it. Right. Like, Men just men just don't know how to get themselves out of bed and into the gym. Like there's no the there's no value there for them within themselves. I mean What do you mean by that? So they're gonna get I mean, a man gets out of bed and he doesn't want to go to the gym, he just goes to work, comes home, eats dinner, doesn't have sex with his wife, goes to sleep. Mm. It's just like groundhog day. Like where's the motivation for him to go to the gym and get healthy? Yeah, he's going to have a healthier body, cool. But with the fitness industry especially, there's no deeper connection to the client when it comes to getting into the gym. I mean, a, a lot of my focus with my clients when I had the gym was like, okay, cool, like, like why is this so important to you? Like, mm. what, cool, you're going to get a good body, but what are you going to be able to do with it? I think at the end of the day, with every person who wants to make a significant health and wellness change, there is deep... Root, it's like you see a tree, a tree, mm. all these deep roots. Oh, 100%. How do we get to them and figure out what those are? Exactly. Why those are? A lot of them, I think, deal back to trauma, mm. childhood sure. shit. Yeah, absolutely. People develop these um, automatic negative thoughts, these mm. self, uh, self defeating beliefs about themselves yeah. that translate. Mm, for sure. Like if they've been conditioned to think a certain way from a young age, it, it's challenging for them to break that by themselves. Like I went through the exact same thing. Like in what way? So, with uh, like I had a deep rooted belief system that whenever anything was really really good, it had to turn to shit. Hmm. Like this is almost like a too good to be true kind of thing. And I had that for I had that for years until I did some work with my coach and we did like a belief system change around it. Whereas I was like, cool. Well, what if things were going really good? Then they got even better. So it was more of a focus on, okay, cool. This is going really good. Now, how can I make it better? And then it got better. I was like, cool. Now, how can I make that better? And it was just like, instead of a domino effect of everything falling down, it fell up, I guess you could mm. say. Mm. Yeah. Whereas like, if they have this belief system that cool, like, you know, I'm going to have this body, but I'm not going to be able to, I'm going to look good. Like, wow, I'm still going to have this shit inside of my head that makes me feel like crap. Mm. Why should I go to the gym? So I think there definitely needs to be a lot more, a lot more of a focus on, you know, the, that deep rooted stuff, like getting below the surface, especially with men. It's like, they're so closed off, man. Like, Absolutely. Uh, Did you see um, the first uh, episode with Christian? Yes. Right? Yeah. I really listened to it on the way home, uh, the way here, sorry. Perfect. Yeah. So then you, it's very fresh. Mm. That is what we're, what we're talking about. Yeah. Like, I resonate so much with what he said. Like 
he it seems like he like he distracted himself with business like everything was going so fucking awesome for him and he knew he had shit going on but he didn't want to talk about it and then it just i feel like everything just built up for him and built up and built up and then you know it was like a volcano and mm. it just exploded and shit hit the fan and thank fuck he come out the other side but there's so many young men and women or just men and women in general don't yeah they don't yeah absolutely like and I mean, this is exactly why I'm doing this because, like, the suicide rate for men needs to come down, bro. Like, mm. it's way too fucking high right, right now. And, like, I mean, listening to listening to Christian speak about, you know, how, he, how he's gotten past it. You know, he did the rehab thing and whatever, like, perfect. And, like, he seems fucking awesome now. Like, when I met him three years ago, he was still the same, like, buzz, like... Passionate. Passionate energetic. motherfucker, yep. right? Like... But now there's like a there's like a steely edge to him now. Like he knows what the fuck he's doing now. That's interesting. A steely edge. Yeah. That's really a. You want that? Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. Like you want to be aware of yourself. Like you don't want to. You don't want to be sitting at the front desk of your own gym, not knowing if you're gonna fucking wake up the next day. Mm. Like you're talking to all these people, and if you're projecting, like, because unconsciously men project their shit onto each other no matter what everyone projects their shit onto everyone it's just that's just how it goes and if he's sitting there at the desk and any man if any man's talking to anyone and they're projecting their shit onto someone else they're going to take that on board and if one man is closed off and it's going to project onto another man he's going to be closed off and then all of a sudden now we've got that domino effect where all men across the whole fucking world are closed off Whereas, like, if we, we 100% need to change that. And, like, yeah, sorry. Christian's, like, a prime example. He he started talking about his stuff now. And look at him. Like, I, I, I haven't been, like, I haven't followed his journey closely. Like, you've worked with him or whatever. But I feel like he's he's thriving a lot more now. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, if we have a 10, 15, 20-year problem, it's going to take some time. Oh, absolutely. To address. Yeah. But it starts with today. Mm, what can we sure. do? Exactly. Right now. Exactly. I'll actually, I was curious on, on like the suicide in, with, in Australia. Um, and this is on uh, lifeline.org.au. The overall suicide rate in 2015 was 12.6 per 100,000. This is the highest rate in 10 plus years. This is 2015, five mm. years ago. Um, the most recent Australian data uh, in, 20, in 2015 at 3,027. This equates to more than eight deaths by suicide Australia each day. Uh, deaths by suicide in Australia occur among males at a rate three times greater than for females. However, during the past decade, there's been an increase in suicide by deaths for females. And then again, there's, then there's minority Aboriginal Torres Strait Islanders. People have more than double the national risk or the national rate. 5.2% uh, of all Indigenous deaths compared to 1.8% of non-Indigenous people. Wow. Damn. And then attempts. For every death by suicide, it is estimated that as many 30 people attempt to end their lives. That is approximately 65,300 attempts each year. So there you go. How do, like... And I think part of the, dealing with that is... It's hugely multifaceted. Mm. There is no one no, no yeah. one approach that's going to fix or address. Yeah. But if we talk about from an individual level, I think there is peace that you can make with yourself and your life through going through voluntary adversity, pain, and suffering. And what I mean by that is what we just did. Mm. Physically training your body. Mm. Whatever that is for you. Running, weight training, yoga, um, any sport. Yeah. How do we develop this mental capacity and potential for resiliency? Like Goggin says, building calluses of the mind. Mm. How do we do that? And I think if every person found their own outlet through physical movement and activity. Absolutely. Then I think we take all the statistics we just read. I think they go down, man. For sure. Like... 100 percent like with what you with what you just said with strength training and with yoga and everything like that like we need to find the balance of like stressing the body and the mind mm -hmm. and then relaxing the body and the mind like we did at the end right yeah like 
Like, we trained hard. We know how to go zero to 60. Yeah. Zero to 100. Yeah. Like, we'll just, like, fucking stress the body. And then at the end, we're like, cool, let's relax. Right. Not yeah. many people know how to go from 100 to zero. Mm. Right? Kelly Starrett talked about this in a recent email. Um, and I'm like, that's a great point. We know how to rev up. We know how to warm up. We know how to go, go, go. Yeah. But can we slow down? Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, how, do, how many people do you talk to that do, like, breathing technique? Bro, I work... Working in this industry, you would think it would be a high number. It's not. It is not. No. Like I'm even in the gym here. Mm. Like I don't. I'm pretty much the only guy who does it post session. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, w- Wim Hof's big for a reason. Yes. Like, because the shit works. Yeah. Like, and it's, like we do it every day. It's one of the easiest things that you can do to like slow down and just like yeah. relax the body, like. It takes two minutes of breathing, laying in bed every day. It's free. Yeah, exactly. Don't have to pay for it. We're doing it 20,000 times a day already. Yeah, exactly. Minus. But like, men will look at this. No, I don't want to fucking breathe slowly. Like, why would I do that? I breathe, I I breathe 20,000 yeah. times a day. Yeah. Like, this is what we need to change. Like, <laughs> there's, there's like, what's, what's the worst that can happen? Mm, it's a good question to ask. Mm, for sure. And like, meditation as well. Like, it's a form of meditation breathing. Like, there's no... And, like, how many men do you talk to that do meditation mm. or do yoga or do any form of slowing down at all? It's it's not common. The positive thing, I think it is rising. For sure. Um, at a relative level, I think it is rising and it's gaining popularity, which is great. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that... I think you're right. That there are... It's not these things are stigmatized like like uh video games in some ways mm. uh, these things are stigmatized and so people uh, turned off them so then how do we ch- and even meditation that word mm. it's like a woo word for something yeah. so it's like i don't even call it that for a lot of people right yeah. I'll, I'll call it mindfulness or i'll just you're just breathing you're just doing conscious purposeful breathing yoga for me is mindful movement yeah that's it I don't, need to, I don't need to tell you about sun salutations. I don't need to tell you about like what Shavasana means. I don't need to tell you any Sanskrit con- uh, conversions. Let's just move our body with some conscious um, discipline. Yeah. Done. It's a good way of putting it for sure. Because I know that, you know, with the men that I've spoken to about maybe even getting into some yoga, mm-hmm. there's that stigma of like, I'm not doing yoga. I'm like yoga's for pussies. Yoga's for, mm. yoga's for women who want to get more flexible. Like, mm. That's the, that's the the common answer. What do you respond with that? Because the immediate response, I think, for a lot of people is like, "Fuck no, man!" Like it, it, it's an, it's a bit annoying, right? Mm. But then after you get past that point, what do you respond with? Like, there's there's definitely a, a response of like, "Fuck!" Like, come on, bro! Like, who cares if it's for it? It was like the origins of yoga weren't made for women. Correct. It was originally women weren't allowed to do no. it. No, yeah. Did you know this? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, absolutely. Um, it was a as a male dominated right. discipline. Exactly. Right, through India, mm. hundreds of years ago, and the guy called Krishnamacharya, he uh, popularized and brought it to the West. But before that, he and a couple of other of his like these uh, big uh, yogi figures, mm. they brought it to the West and they popularized it. And then then it came attached to women. Yeah, absolutely. But. When you just frame the conversation like that, you'd be like, the history of it is for men, was oh, for Oh, men. yeah, no. Can't go down that path straight away, for sure. Like, like step one, even before I'm like talking to them about yoga, mm. I'm, I'm like getting on their level, calming their like reptilian brain and like, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And just like having like a casual conversation, just like we are now. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, yeah, cool. Like, have you ever tried any yoga? And I'd be like, yoga? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like any form of like, yoga or stretching or anything like that. Like, nah, nah, yoga's for pussies, bro. Have you actually heard that? Yoga's for pussies. Yeah, because yeah. you live in a Absolutely. Di- you live in a different area to mm. here where I think it's closer to the city, maybe a bit more open and progressive. Yeah. Do you find oh. like people are stuck in like tradition? Yeah. Yeah. Mate. Like I think in Mafra, shit's been the same there for like thirty years. Bro. But yeah. how good is that? Keep talking. Yeah. Like, um, that you can come in and you can be a change. Oh, absolutely. And like with the gym and everything, like we've had, I mean, we've had stretch and like yoga classes yeah, awesome. right at the gym and there's like yoga classes running now and there's been, like including me, there was one other male. 
in the class in, in the classes yeah yeah that's typical yeah so back to like trying to get men to like do yoga firstly calming them getting on their level and everything like that and then like telling them the benefits of it but relating it to them like depending on where they're coming from too like if they're like oh man there's like so many benefits to yoga too or just any form of mindful movement how about this discipline 100 percent. discipline's an attractive quality do you want to be more disciplined in your life do you want to feel better in your life mm. do you want to have the biggest one for me is control over your emotions <laughs> what yeah. what yoga will exp- what has exposed me to over the years is it puts you in challenging positions physically and then it reflects mentally 100 percent. you can get frustrated your ego can get in the way and it's like man these these like 40 year old women who are kicking my ass right now and they are in these they are getting into these positions mm. i can't and you make comparisons your ego gets get gets too out of control like okay let's bring it back mm. and you learn to control the chatter yes you learn to control this driver in your head and once you gain control over that yoga is just the vehicle for discipline and self-control absolutely i like that that's good that's it mm. Because I think it's feminized, right? Yeah, it is, for so, sure. So how do we kind of reframe the conversation? Mm. It's an interesting topic. Because I feel like they're like, yeah, personally, I mean, I reckon I've got one dude to do yoga out of maybe 10 conversations that I've had about it. So it's, it's challenging for sure. And like, yeah, the stigma around yoga is, oh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a feminine thing yeah. to do. Um, and I'm guessing you've definitely done a lot of it. Yeah, well, so much so that I, uh, since 17 years old, I got recommended it from a basketball coach. Um, Pilates was the gateway to yoga for me yeah. because I had a lot of imbalances and I, just to get stronger in my body and that really mm-hmm. helped me. Then I got into yoga and then I noticed the mind mental benefits yeah. and that really, that just took it from there. And then from there, I'm like, all right, I, I, got, I wanna be a yoga teacher one day. Then I did my teacher training in 2017 um, at Ihana Yoga, which I highly, highly recommend if you're in the St. Kilda area, mm-hmm. Ihana Yoga. Um, and once I did that, it gave me this amazing framework to not only teach, but also position the conversation uh, to people on a deeper level. Yeah. And so even if you don't want to become a teacher, you just want to deepen your practice, I think a teacher training is is extremely beneficial. In fact, I'm doing a, I think it's a great way to position as well, Yoga for Athletes. Yeah, yoga right. for men it it's funny if we just attach those words to it yeah it almost like oh okay this is for me mm. i can do this you know because if i just say yoga vinyasa yoga bikram yoga nah i'm good yeah exactly no this is designed for athletes it's pretty similar to what i would have done already ordinarily right <laughs> maybe a bit more specific to like you know some some uh, dysfunctions that athletes and men have mm. but it's just reframe it yeah hey guys the whole time you've been doing regular yoga welcome how, may, how, how beneficial is <laughs> yeah. it? Congratulations. Yeah, exactly. I like that. When, with your basketball coach, mm. you know, he, he mm-hmm. yeah, he recommended you do yoga. What he was recommended your... Pilates and yoga, okay, yeah. but I think it was Pilates off the bat. Yeah. And um, Michael Nolan, I will always be grateful for him because he st- kicked that off. Mm. And without that spark, you know, sometimes you, who knows where you've been? Yeah. Where you'll be. And when he was like, yeah, cool. Cause I know we said before, like, we have the conversation with men about doing yoga. Mm-hmm. What was your what was your initial response? To there, w- there was no judgment. Yeah, cool. There wasn't because I didn't I didn't know. Mm. I was completely ignorant of both sides. Yeah, like I didn't really know to judge it, um, and to put a stigma in front of it because I was so ignorant. Yeah, and because I grew up, you know, it's different now. Like when I was playing basketball like that when I was fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I didn't have social media. True. I didn't have a phone to stigmatize things and stereotype things. Um, that really, I think, that has changed how much information gets around. I just didn't have the information, but now I do. And so people get, you know, we talked about earlier in the conversation, like, people know what to do. Mm. And now there's so much information. People think they know what to do. Then someone else tells them something else yeah. and they're confused as fuck. Yeah. And what do we do about that? Mm. True. Like, man the social media thing and then people creating their own perceptions around certain things is huge now like you see i mean 
especially like celeb trainers and like people like that they'll put one video up saying how bad yoga is for your joints or whatever the fuck it could be anything right could be, could, yeah. yeah it could be whatever like Based on the topic of yoga, they could say yoga's fucked. And people it, will run with it. Oh, 100%. And then all of a sudden they've created like this new neurological pathway of how fucked yoga is. And right. that'll just stick with them for so long. And, and I think you would have heard the Game Changers documentary. Yeah. You would have heard about the chaos that that oh, brought with yeah. arguments for and against plants and meat. Yeah. And I think it's in a similar vein to that. People hear and see a convincing portrayal of information Mm -hmm. that's portrayed in a nice documentary great visuals it's like uh, very well made right a sexy package we're selling you this idea take it and run with it Mm. people did so much so that like we're only seeing one side of an equation right you listen to joe rogan yeah okay did you see the chris cresser uh episode with him critiquing it no okay so i must have spent 10 to 20 hours i'm a voracious note taker i must have spent 10 to 20 hours note taking that that podcast and the one after it uh with the one of the producers or the creators of the game changers and i'm I'm just i just want to find the closest thing to truth yeah right i think if we all try and do that let's you have this idea about yoga you have this idea about nutrition and plants and meat and I heard uh, my uh, my girlfriend's one of her her man her manager. She said, um, uh, "Did well, I'm, I feel a bit?" Uh, girlfriend said, "You feel a bit tired after after eating an hour later, right?" And sometimes, depending on what you can eat, that can cause that, right? Could be a whole bunch of other things yeah. as well. Point is, the manager said, "Oh, did you have meat in your meal?" She said, "Yeah." Oh, it's because you ate meat. Meat makes you lethargic. <laughs> where we go where do we go from there where we paint these black and white pictures like meat makes you lethargic and it was came off the back of watching that documentary yeah this is the problem mm, for sure and like like i'll tell you i've been plant-based for almost a year now oh f- yeah this is fucking amazing then right because the way you responded to my conversation is like you're open to both sides yeah well i mean i had like the the stereotypical western diet for Mm. 24 years Mm -hmm. and then like I made the decision based off okay cool like this is aligned to me this is aligned with what I want to do and what I want to do with men and what I want to do with the world and the impact that I'm going to have and the legacy I'm going to leave yeah not based off cool when can I go stand in the middle of the main street of Melbourne and stop traffic Mm. like what what do you you think so vegetarian vegan pescatarian flexitarian what are we on vegan gotcha interesting that is the most aggressive form of plant-based diet. So, go on about that. What do you, what do you think when people get so tied up in their emotion, they they feel like they want to create the biggest demonstration of spectacle? Mm. I think attaching like attaching emotion to any decision yep. is super fucking powerful. So, in saying that, the news will show these vegans standing you know, in the main street, blocking traffic, saying the meat industry is fucked. I've seen people, there's a, I I believe it's a goat farm. Someone from my area can correct me if they want to. Um, But these these vegan activists decided to go to this goat farm because they were being cruel to the animals and they stole the goats. They stole the goats. I, I believe that is how the story went. They stole the goats. Okay. And like, and then what? Of course, the news is like, Vegan activist steals goats. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. Like, I, I do believe that the stealing the goats part is, is the most important facet here, but they've focused on the vegan activist part. Well, probably because I assume that's what pushed them to steal the goats, is being oh, having that sure. ideology. Most likely. Uh, I think, like, the point I'm trying to get across is, like, yeah. the, the thing with, like, blocking traffic, stealing goats, whatever the fuck, if a vegan does it, they're going to show all the bad shit that vegans do. And then people see that. Yeah. And they're like, I don't want to be a fucking vegan. They look angry and sad and fucking look like they hate themselves. Right. Why the fuck would I want to be vegan? Mm -hmm. Whereas I just talked to my old mate, Brett down here, who's a dairy farmer. He seems like the happiest bloke alive and he eats steak every night for dinner. 
we can have both guys yeah like it doesn't matter what you do like i'm not i'm not gonna sit here and tell you to go vegan i don't i i don't even think half the people i know know that i'm vegan because i don't like i'm i'm, I'm not vocal about it i don't tell people to be vegan because it's good for you and like when the game changes documentary came out i'm sitting there watching it and i'm like i'm glad they made it mm. because it brought awareness to it again like it seems to pop up every, i think there was a there was a documentary before that what is the name of it is it what the health was yeah, that what it's called it, that's yeah it. So, one. same thing like that pops up a few people go plant-based cool whatever people don't go plant-based whatever mm-hmm. like you do what you want to do game changes comes out people go plant-based cool awesome like as long as they're doing it like your diet can be whatever the fuck you want it to be sure if, if you're doing it because it's a decision that you've made not based off you know if the decision is based off what you want to do and what is right for your body and what's aligned for you awesome but if you've done it because the meat industry is fucked and you watched game changes yeah because you watched a one hour documentary and you think you know everything about fucking science and nutrition science yeah then mm, maybe take another look at your food and then make a decision based off what's right for you and there are so many factors like to this i've been compiling because i i really i try everyone has their biases mm. right and i really respect that you have you you know because how your approach and like plant-based diet not trying to convert people right mm. because what happens is we create these teams meat-based team plant-based yeah. team religion x religion y right and plant-based meat-based in the middle they become ideologies mm. and now when i challenge what you your lifestyle which all it is lifestyle habit yeah i'm challenging your ideology what is that you've attached your ideology to your identity now i'm challenging your identity who you are no 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 that's not what i'm doing it's not no, what we're no. doing here <laughs> we're talking about the black and white and the gr- all the gray in between the facts and fiction of nutrition science but people get caught up in the emotion mm-hmm. of plants, religion, just whatever ideology and attaching it to their identity. Exactly, For sure. It's like, it's like the stopping traffic thing. Uh-huh. They see these angry, like sadistic people who just happen to be vegan, stopping traffic in Melbourne, holding signs up, protesting. So then they go deep down. They're like, well, I don't, want to be angry sad and right things like that it's nothing it makes, it's nothing really to do with plant-based it's really bad for the cause yeah if right. you want more people to go plant-based calm the fuck down and let's have a conversation exactly exactly but you know what i think he, he, let's work on common ground i always try and like whenever whenever there's like a disagreement with somebody let's find common ground first mm. okay i think we all can agree that factory farming should be abolished for sure i think we can all agree that where can we start there's a lot of aggressive plant-based individuals and groups who think everybody on the planet should eat all plants immediately. Yeah. All right, guys. 95% approximately the population to 97% eat meat. That's going to be pretty difficult. Yeah. Right? I 100% agree. Let's start somewhere. Yeah. Let's start where we can agree. For sure. And let's agree that factory farming should be removed. Absolutely. Have you... Um, because you live more in the country, Victoria, right? Yeah. Probably close to those types of things. Mm. Have you been exposed, seen? What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Hmm. Like in terms of, like I used to live on a farm. Yes, but you would have seen then the, like, the positive. Oh, yeah. Like there's, like there's no, there's no animal cruelty on our farm. Mm-hmm. Like... I remember when I was a kid, like I used to love going over to the dairy with my dad and getting milk like straight out of the vat and then going back and like eating my wheat bix. So you have raw milk? Yeah. Another thing people are super scared to have. Right? Like, I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, because guess what? If you look back through history, we started consuming raw milk because we, once we started um, uh, agri- modern agriculture and we started mm. uh, getting, uh, what's it called? Using animals to our advantage is a word for it um, to help us sustain us, right? We got cows, we milked them. Yep. And what is milk? It's very calorically dense. Yes. Right? And in times of famine, um, it's very useful to have milk. Yeah. But what does raw milk have? It has 
the enzymes to help break down things like lactose. Mm. It has lactase. It has all these enzymes to help break down the fat. But then we pasteurize it. I don't know what you think about this, but we pasteurize it. We, we heat it up. We get rid of all the enzymes. And now we have this very non-nutrient dense. We now pump it through with nutrients because now it doesn't devoid of any. And now we have this very non-nutrient dense, um, has no enzymes in it. And so people, it triggers uh, lactose sensitivities. Yeah. And then people demonize raw milk. But in your experience, how does the comparison have? Because I've never tried raw milk. Oh, man. I mean, I don't remember the taste, but I don't... I, I, there's definitely a taste difference. Yeah. For sure. I bet. Like, man, I was, I was so young. I don't actually remember what it, what it tastes like or yeah. what it felt like or yeah. anything like that or what it did for my body. Um, haven't tried raw milk since then. It's definitely something I've been intrigued by, for sure. Because I'm like, if I see something, I'm just like, cool, like, that'd be cool to try. Like... I don't have any perceptions about anything or opinions on anything. It's just like, cool, if I try it and I like it, then I'm going to have it. Right. In terms of how milk is now processed, I believe there could be a better way of doing that. Mm. Like, and how they, they just inject all the shit into it now. And like, I don't know the stats, but I mean, I've read multiple like studies how like a majority of the world's population is lactose intolerant brother i got the stats keep talking yeah get it up man like a bit like i thought i was slightly lactose intolerant and i'm like why the fuck do i get so sick when i like eat ice cream and like have milkshakes and shit like that and i'm like reading up on it and i'm like well that's fucking why like humans are not made to like digest milk or like dairy products now go ahead go ahead you keep talking um I can't remember where I've read this, but um, like our bodies aren't made to, yeah, our bodies aren't made to digest milk or any sort of dairy products. Like milk is literally, milk comes from a cow and it's made for a baby cow. Because like I said, it's so, it's it's calorie dense and it's going to help you grow for sure. And like, man, I mean, I don't know who created the, the perception of like, you know, milk's full of protein and you got to drink milk to get big. And big, strong bars, yeah. calcium. It's like the only thing that apparently has calcium in it. Yeah, literally. Uh, guys, what about plants and seeds? What about vegetables? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> uh, but this is, there was, it's the pervasive thought that, that came along, yeah. right? And so what, what was, for like, like I was um, raised on having a glass of milk every morning when I was a kid, like many yeah. other young, young uh, kids. And like, look, well-intended uh, parents, mm think they're giving you something nutritious with yeah. with vitamins and micronutrients little do they know that well there's a number of things about two-thirds of the population are lactose intolerant mm. okay or d- rather they don't have the enzyme lactase which breaks down lactose yep. okay it's very important you need that enzyme which is why you'll see certain dairy products it says contains lactase which is good you want that to help break down the lactose. Yep. If you don't have that enzyme, then you start to see variety of different physiological, gastrointestinal, or neurological symptoms. Yeah. All right. Bloating, gassiness, diarrhea, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, depending on the quantity. Um, and it's actually very common in Asian societies to have lactose intolerance. It is almost 100 percent. It is wow. 90 plus percent, and it goes down to history and agricultural. Um, uh, History, yeah. Hmm. 11,000 years ago, we brought these cows in. We became dairy farmers, um, goats, sheep, cattle. And then we used these cows to our advantage to st- uh, stave off malnutrition, etc., hmm. etc. But there would be other populations that didn't do that as readily. And so why some people can get away with having milk consistently is because there's something called lactase persistence. And so from a child, you know, your mother... you hopefully you get your mother's breast milk um and that contains the enzymes in it to help break it down you come off it once you come off that breast milk if you don't continue having milk the lack you will not have lactase persistence Mm. okay then a natural intolerance will build but if you continue like i did when i stopped many years ago uh if you continue to get the lactase persistence but you look like your heritage is from like a Nordic country, like an Ireland or like a Scotland. Is that Irish? Yeah, right. Pretty sure it's Irish. Yeah, yeah. Where are your parents born? Australia. Okay. 
Um, but Northern European descent people have the best statistics for... Actually, I've got it right here. So we're looking at 7 to 20... 7 to 20 percent of people caucasian descent have a, a lactose sensitivity tolerance a lot of african americans 65 to 75 percent 90 plus percent asian populations 70 percent in australian aboriginal populations um but lactase persistence which is the continuum of the enzyme is is really high like 90 plus percent in scandinavian type countries denmark norway sweden yeah right so you can see it depends on your population mm, for sure so, there's some stats for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a you need like a you need a stats guy or something. I need a you need a I, guy. I need, I need a, a Jamie. Yeah, you need a Jamie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but where I'm pulling all this up from is just my notes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it does help when you don't have to <laughs> do it. <laughs> look, look over. Um, but I'm a. I think notes are like because you can come back to it any time mm. and you have all this stuff. Um, but the bat plant based, what what drove that decision to, to become a vegan? Well, with all of the work that I do, I looked at the like the ripple effect of the impact that I'm having. Like, got that off my coach Tom Clark from the Tom Clark Impact. Check him out. Um, and he sort of showed me to like look deeper at the impact that I was having and what it could have for the world. And to look at everything else in my life and see if that's aligning with that. So, like, essentially, I'm helping men become truly strong. And then they can build stronger relationships, stronger careers, you know, stronger stronger life, basically, a stronger lifestyle. And what's the ripple effect that's going to have? Their families are going to be stronger. The connections there are going to be stronger. And whoever they speak to, that's going to be stronger. They're going to have a stronger sense of like well with everything that i do it's building strength so the the ripple effect would be that if they're if they're becoming truly strong like physically mentally spiritually emotionally then that's going to ripple off into everything that they do so i mean it would be ignorant to believe that they're not going to be building a stronger planet Mm. because if i'm showing five men how to become truly strong they're going to show five people how to become truly strong. They're going to show five people. And then all of a sudden we've got a thousand men becoming truly strong. And then like if, they, if they're they going to want to continually get strong and everything within their life should be a reflection of them, which is strength. And to build a stronger planet, I mean, what do we need to do? We need to reduce like greenhouse gas emissions. Yep. We need to... Uh, reduce the you know the amount of water that we use and things like that so why wouldn't i think about that when i'm talking about like the ripple effect so Mm -hmm. and for me for um like to build a stronger planet it made sense for me to go Mm plant-based because i was like cool okay if i want i'm going to reduce the amount of meat and I, i gradually went into it like i slowly just like reduced the amount of meat that i was eating I was like, I was fairly, I, I was off dairy products anyway. Ice cream was like my weakness, so. You get, get, you get that coconut. Yeah, exactly. You get a coconut type base thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and like, honestly, once I, once I got into it, it was like, I, I personally, like for me, I felt a lot better. My skin got a lot better. My hair got a lot better. I was sleeping a lot better. Like it, it, I couldn't, because I, I was the same as most of society. I was just like, well, like I feel good now, so why would I change what I'm eating? Like there was, there's no, there was no point to me to go through a, a radical diet change. Wait, you said you felt good already? Yeah, so I thought I felt good already. Huh. Just on a Western diet, right? So like, because I never looked into it very much because I just had the same uh, perception of being vegan as what you know most of society would have. Potentially, like I was like, mm, seems like it's too challenging. I'm I'm not going to be able to get enough protein and yada yada. But you can absolutely, you can absolutely you can. can for sure. You could be an athlete on a plant based diet. You yeah, can, you could have performance on a plant based diet. Absolutely, yeah. See, I was just like, mm, oh, I don't know, like I'm not going to get enough protein. Had a couple of conversations with people who are vegan, and I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Mm. And then within, bro, I reckon within like two weeks, I started noticing 
benefits and started noticing changes like like sleep was a big one like when this because i went vegan when i still had the gym so i was getting up at four in the morning and like going to bed at like 10 10 30 at night so like sleep was minimal so I like for me i needed quality sleep and most of the time i wasn't getting it and it wasn't until i took a step back and looked at the effects that my diet was having like the the western sort of like what was your diet at the time so like just standard like uh like called the sad diet standard american diet oh absolutely yeah like i would have you know it'd be like chicken rice and vegetables for dinner or like steak rice and vegetables tuna and rice um that's not necessarily the standard american diet when we talk about a lot of fast food a lot of oily foods oh i was Um, i was never big on fast food a lot of processed fruit and sugar Mm. pro like I had a lot of processed foods for sure. In what capacity? If I was going to break like it down. Packaged goods? Yeah, like yeah. definitely packaged goods for sure. And it would have made up, oh, I don't know, maybe like 20% of it. It didn't even sound like you had many plants in your diet at the time. Yeah. Like, like, not a lot of micronutrients and vitamins. Yeah, no, no, no. Like I was not eating a lot of, like was not eating a lot of vegetables at all, for sure. Um, and then I just like gradually, yeah, gradually took out meat and then... At, at the start, like, it was fucking hard for sure. Like, um, uh, especially just, like, if I wanted, like, a snack, I would go to the supermarket and I'd be like, I can't fucking eat anything. Like, I can't have anything right now. But, like, I had no... I didn't have enough knowledge around plant-based diets to yeah. know what I could and couldn't eat at the start. So it was definitely a learning process for sure. For sure. Um, but, yeah, in terms of, like, the, the benefits... I noticed them fairly instantly, for sure. I spe- like sleep was the one I noticed first. Did you did you change your lifestyle at the same? Were you changing like a couple things that was like, all right, I'm gonna do this plant based. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop these long ass days and of shit sleeping. Mm. Did you change a couple things at the yeah, same time? There was a few things like yeah. um, the my the environment at the gym as well. Yeah, I changed that. Like I completely like revamped the staff room. I painted it, put some fucking plants in there, made it a little bit more like, you know, like open and like productive kind of vibes rather than like come in and sift through the dirty dishes for like a clean coffee cup kind of thing um so yeah definitely the environment um at home as well for sure like environment at home changed the diet moved changed out? uh yes moved yeah moved houses for sure yep um uh and like changes in my relationship as well mm. like with my girlfriend like it was big things for sure so and after like maybe a month after I made the decision to go plant based, I was just like, fuck, like I'm probably never gonna look back, hey. Like it got easier. Like I felt great. Like at the start, I wasn't eating enough. So I like lost weight, like strength dipped and things like that. And then like once I started educating myself a lot you more on it. You figured it out. Yeah, exactly. You, I, yeah, you figure it out on the fly. Like mm. with anything, I mean I be, like I'm a big believer that you need to experience something to create your own perception on it. Like if you haven't done it, like I'm not going to listen to how much you hate vegans when you haven't even tried it. I mean, I'm open to anyone. Like I don't care what diet you've got, like whatever. But yeah, like uh, initially I dropped a heap of weight because I wasn't eating anything and I was like, fuck, I really need to learn a lot about being plant-based. Mm. Otherwise I'm just like going to go back to what I was eating before that and yeah once i learned like what worked for me um like my wife's an amazing cook as well so that makes it a lot easier Mm. like she makes um like this tempeh stir fry that's fucking incredible makes you makes you kind of forget that you of meat right yeah like and like the spices and stuff you can use like you can make great tasting food yeah irrespective of it the 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 meat and plant Mm, absolutely yeah yeah, like it, it just made sense for me to... And it's been a year, you said? Yeah, it'd be almost a year. Okay. Yeah, almost a year. It's interesting because um, that's, it's like, you, it sounded like you used, because when people like make lifestyle decisions, some people do one thing at a time or they'll mm. do like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to, I'm going to revamp and I'm going to level yep. up. I'm going to change a couple things at once. How much do you think the environment, changing the environment, because environment is huge, huge right? Like yeah. social, emotional mm. health that's gonna like stress yeah that's gonna have huge impact on like For sure on like nervous system sleep etc how much in the environment had an impact um on improving your well-being and health 
huge man yeah oh like it's one of the easiest things that you can change if you want to change like change your environment doesn't matter what it is like fucking take all the pictures off the wall and hang new ones that's changing your environment change your bed sheets mm. like doesn't matter what the fuck it is yeah but if you're consistently walking into a dark office light is super important right yeah yeah, yeah. like you add a you add a couple of like indoor plants to any room and it's yeah. gonna lighten it up for yeah. sure and it'll like, clean the air too yeah exactly like fucking open a window have a diffuser like whatever the hell because mm. every time you walk into that room you're going to anchor some sort of certain feeling to that room so why would you not anchor a good feeling there uh, that's a great point anchor mm. the positive feeling right have your little your peaceful kind of sanctuary of focus mm. and discipline yeah like this this whole setup this table like everything you've got going on here as soon as i sat down i'm like fuck we're about to have like a conversation that's f huh. right like it's funny you say that yeah like it's it just must be what you have anchored to like this this whole table mm. this setup this everything and like when i as soon as i walked in here like the gym down the bottom here i was just like oh fuck they get some work done in here yeah like that's right they fucking work down here and like i could feel that straight away yeah that's, that's a that's a great point it's like what does the environment and atmosphere represent? Mm, for sure. Because I feel, and like especially with the, the area that I'm working in now with men and everything, like wherever they go to work, whatever job they've got or anything like that, if they're sitting in a excavator all day, whatever the fuck they've anchored to that excavator, they're going to feel every mm. single fucking day. Every yep. time they sit in that chair, Great every point. time they grab the controls they're going to feel it. And if they fucking hate their job, every single fucking time they get in that excavator, they're going to fucking hate themselves and they're going to hate everything that's going on because hate's the feeling that they've anchored in there. So, yeah. Th and it's like some people, when they walk in their homes, they feel that every day, man. Yeah. They feel these tumultuous emotions and like, I don't want to be here type shit. Right. This is, this is self-destructive relationships I have. And so I think like changing that environment look at the huge effect and it's had on your well-being and health and i think putting it in perspective of like i think when there's any diet change irrespective of what type of diet change there is we always have to look at what else was changed right mm -hmm. it's like a, a good study will always try to control for other variables yeah and so to paint an accurate picture i think a lot of people when they say for example a lot of people have found benefit off carnivore because mm -hmm. they've cut out all of these immune system triggers yeah. from other foods right and people go plant-based they often experience this like ve uh, vegan uh, honeymoon phase where they've gone from a deficient a diet that's already been deficient already been like processed foods da -da -da -da. Yeah, yeah. it's maybe not so much that the plant-based was the miracle was that what else did the plant-based give you it gave you nutrient dense foods yeah. maybe if what is the lesson there that people could take nutrient density um vitamins minerals micronutrients super important for, for brain and brain health as well it's like where can we take that lesson and apply it to our own life absolutely for sure it's a good point like that and like the environment thing for me was was so big in in uh in the same respect with the diet change because i mean i cleaned up my environment cleaned up my diet mm -hmm. cleaned up a few things in good my shit happens yeah what do you think like it's not magic yeah i mean oh man it's 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 so interesting that this is this is like this conversation is happening because mm. it's the same thing when i like when i walked in the door down here and i'm like yeah cool they fucking get their work done in here any new person that comes in here who's like who wants to change their life physically like they're coming to the right place here because they're going to feel that for sure. And then every time they come here, they're going to feel that. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to take that home with them. They're going to like, fuck, well, if I can feel that here, what else can I fucking feel here? Great point. Like I'm going to get rid of this old saggy couch that my parents gave me that they've had for 30 years that doesn't even feel comfortable. I'm going to change it for something better. I'm going to clean up this environment. Are you familiar with Jordan Peterson? Yeah. Yeah. So he's had a pretty profound impact on me. Um, and how I view the world and my perspective and challenging uh, me as a human being. 
And he just has such a simple saying of clean up your room. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. Keep your room clean. And what that represents symbolically as a metaphor, I think is hugely transformational Mm. because people feel overwhelmed by life, by the chaos of life that they have created or has been pushed, put onto them. Yeah. And if you get stuck, people get stuck. It's like, what do you do? Right. And I think for those people who are stuck, it's like, you just got to start with what's around you. Mm. It's like, you might see all these problems Fuck this, this, this. I got to clean up so much shit in my life. But where do you start? Make your bed in the morning. Just get one small win. It don't matter if the whole, the rest of the day, nothing happens. If you start at one small win, make that bed in the morning. Your your room's a mess. Your house is a mess. That that reflects your life. Absolutely. Right? Your environment reflects your mental state. Mm. If your environment is a mess... Why wouldn't your mind be a mess? Yeah. And so if we can, that's one thing per day that we can address. All right, I'm going to pack away this and put it away. Next day, I'm going to do one more, I'm going to do one more thing. And you keep mm. building. Absolutely, for sure. And that will reflect in every other area of your life. For sure. Absolutely. You build a habit. Yeah, like you can, you can tell a lot of, you can tell a lot by someone by just walking into their house. Oh, yeah. Like you see where their priorities are. Oh yeah. But you know, I, I get fucked up because I can get judgmental. Oh yeah. yeah and I can be like, all right, fuck. You got to calm down because mm. this is actually a recent uh, Dear Alexander memoir. I kind of wrote to myself. It's like, look, you can't compare your ideals and your standards of your life to other people's. How no? And that's what I've, 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 I've done that before, and I'm like, it's a dangerous spot because then it's like, you. Not expect, but you kind of do expect people to come to your level, mm. right? Closely, it's like, hey, like, come on, like, if my standards up here, you gotta, you gotta raise up. But it's like, no, their standard not necessarily may work. Uh, your standard may not work for them. Exactly. Just because you have X, Y, and Z standards, doesn't mean they're not fulfilled and, and joy filled and have meaning within this standards they've created. Yeah, for sure. And coming to peace with that mentality has really been challenging. But it's like, you know what? Look, there may look when you walk in, like you say, you walk in someone's house, you get to see their priorities, you get to see it's a reflection of them. But at the same time, look at them; they may be perfectly content. Mm, absolutely. Or they may not be. Most people aren't. Yeah. So what can we do about it? Yeah, true. Like, I think yeah, the someone's house is definitely a reflection of them, and if they're happy with what's going on in there, for sure. Like if they're leading fulfilling content lives great i would love to challenge that and be like okay are you really leading yeah the life, the life you, you want to live yeah. yeah like if where could we be yeah um, like what's i mean pe- we people get so caught up in just like the fucking rat race man like yeah. it's just like no this is how it's meant to be like i'm meant to just go to work and i'm meant to just come home to this messy house and just do the cleaning on the weekend and blah 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 and it's just like it's just like a slow like <sighs> a slow it, death man yeah a slow death exactly and it's like cool is this is this really what you would want to be remembered for like at your funeral i get really dark when i say people living those lifestyles i'm like you're living a slow death mm. I get super dark. I'm like, why, why, why are you still here? Like, I get, re- I get really like cr- unfairly, but also fairly critical. I'm like, we got one life. Let's maximize this motherfucker. Oh yeah. Let's squeeze the motherfucking life out of this bitch. For sure. I don't know what the fuck happens next. No one does. Well, you don't know if you're gonna die tomorrow. Nope. <laughs> Kobe, go- Kobe gone at 41. Right. No matter how much money he had. Mm. No matter how successful and how much influence he had, no matter how smart he was, that helicopter went down. Mm. And that helicopter's going down for all of us. We don't know when. Mm. And so, like, I was talking to my girlfriend. I'm like, I f- like, it's always emotional when you talk about, when your loved one, you talk about, have you ever talked about with your wife about, like, you know, death? I'm like, you know what? We're young, but, like, shit. 
Have you ever had that conversation of even like, no, I, I would hate for anything to happen to you. Even just bring that, I would hate for anything mm. to happen to you. Has, has that, that conversation ever come up? You ever got like gone there emotionally? We, like we both know what we want to be remembered for. Uh huh. For sure. Like we've done, um, like with our coach, we've both done deathbed visualizations. Ooh, what does that look like? <sighs> Man, they're powerful as fuck. What like, does that look like? Do you want me to share what I saw? Like most, like I did, I literally did the last deathbed visualization I did was on Saturday, like a, a, a day of coaching. If it's a personal thing, if you're comfortable, please. Um, if not, share like a framework of mm. like what that looked like. Yeah. So like, um, like it's a guided visualization. Um, and it's like, cool, you're in the hospital bed. And if you continue on the path that you're on right now, who do you see beside that hospital bed? Shit. Oh, bro, it gets them like... I was laying on my back, like eyes closed and like... Going there, huh? Yeah, like yep. I was deep in it. It's the most clear visualization I've ever had. Like mm. everything was like crystal clear and I'm just like, fuck. And I had the water like in my eyes every time I was like squinting my eyes. It was just like, like I was bawling because mm. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, this this is the path that I'm going down. Like this is this is what the fuck I'm gonna be remembered for. Like this this is what I'm seeing right here. This is the legacy that I'm gonna be leaving. And like, yeah, you 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 see who's standing at your bed if you continue down the path you're on right now. And like I seen a few like my wife was there, um, like my my two dogs were there. I had a couple of family members there, and I was like, fuck yeah, like this is great. And then it's like cool now. If you were to live at the highest version of yourself like you did not hold back and you just like you went at life like with the, you, with absolute purpose and everything like that mm -hmm. what is the one thing that you will be remembered for you, you see your plaque on the ground in the cemetery and it says in memory of Jacob Weatherly who was remembered for his message of and then what's the word you see there? And mine was strength, man. Mm. It was just strength, like in capital letters. And I'm looking at it and I'm just like, Whew. fuck. You have to embody that. Yeah. Like I have to embody it for sure. So like everything that I do, it, it has to be an embodiment of that. Like I have to be a strong fucking human being to be able to, like live my life's purpose and then after that the visualization goes to like your funeral and like you visualize who is uh who's reading your um eulogy yeah your eulogy eulogy, oh, fuck, eulogy and like you visualize that and then you visualize who is at your funeral and i was like fuck like half the room was filled with men like strong men like one whole side of the room and then i have my family members at the front here and my two dogs were at the front and like half the room and then men behind and then there was like a line of men out the door and i'm just sitting there i'm like fuck i'm gonna have all these men be strong fucking men like not just physically like mentally emotionally and spiritually as well mm -hmm. and then it goes back to okay now who is at your who's at your bedside in that who's beside your bed in the hospital and I seen my wife, my mum and dad, my two dogs, and there was two kids that were like 14, 15 years old, like a son and a daughter. And I was like, fuck, like, man, yeah, it gets emotional as fuck for sure. What does that do for you after you visualize that? That's got to strengthen your resolve and your mm, mission. Like, for sure. how does that reframe your priorities or re ingrain your priorities. Yeah. So straight after the visualization, you just, you go straight into uh, like a journaling process where you just write like whatever comes up. You just literally like mind dump everything. That's a good idea. Yeah. So like, I was just like, fuck, like I'm going to be remembered for, I'm going to be remembered for my, my, my message of strength. Like what is strength for me? strength is and I just wrote like everything that I believe strength is about and where strength is prevalent in everyone and in everyone's life and it was like within relationships within their nutrition within their training within their job like 
so much. Mm. Like you, you can almost relate anything back to strength for sure. And how that now directs me on the path that I need to go is because I've never felt such a strong emotional connection to like that message of strength ever in my life. And I believe that that word showed up for a reason. Mm. And I believe that's the reason I'm here. Damn. Because if I had, if I had have seen any other word, like that would be the reason I'm here. For sure. Now your mission is to help other human beings find that. Absolutely. Find what you found. Yep. Because once you get there mentally, bro, you're unstoppable. Right. It's over. Exactly. Shut it down. It doesn't matter what happens. You almost make peace with death mm. in a lot of ways. You know what? Because you know every day is lived with purpose and intention. Exactly. Like, like I, I would honestly say, like, I would be happy to die tomorrow. Mm. For sure. Because I know now, like, I am living my life with the purpose and with... with with the legacy that I'm leading right now, this is what I'm going to be remembered for. That right there, like that's, if you can really feel that and really embody mm. that and really believe what you just said, because I was taught, that's really interesting you said that. Because what triggered that conversation was that I had a similar thought having that conversation with my girlfriend. She was, you know, she told me, it came up of like death, you know, mm. and it's like, you know what? Just in a quick reflection. Since since about 15 years old, I really started going hard at this life shit. Mm. You know, all before then was just de- just growth and development yep. and other shit, childhood shit. Since 15 years old, since I started taking basketball seriously and letting that be the mission of my life for that period of time. If I reflect on the last 10 years, I'm like, man... I'm, I really squeezed the fuck out of this shit, right? I really have very minimal regrets and I feel like I'm at a place of chasing and acquiring and feeling meaning, fulfillment and now joy, mm. which I'm learning to experience, which my girlfriend has taught me and shown me how do we be, how do we chase excellence but at the same time, not be self-destructive mm. you know because sometimes when you go so far in, in a pursuit a masochist self-destructive type of mentality can envelop you and so it's like how do we get that ying no that the yang the ying to the yang excuse me mm-hmm. uh and now joy it's like can we encapsulate all these things i'm like you know what I feel like I'm at a place now where every day, pretty much every day is is focused on these things. And I can, you know what? If it's my turn next week, tomorrow, I've got a huge body of, of work and self-development that I've gone through for, for many years that I've, sh- I've can show myself that, you know what? I've pushed this shit. Mm. I've really tried to challenge myself physically and mentally. And it almost doesn't feel like I should feel like this this young in some ways it's like nah come on like you gotta this this has got to be at least like half a lifetime to get to this feeling but maybe maybe not why not well yeah why not Mm. where where is where is the perception where that's a thing well that's obviously (laughs) self yeah hugely self created right Mm. as you know we could dig where that comes from but doesn't have to be exactly for sure why can't you be at peace to call the way through your life mm. exactly 100 percent. like i want to stop men getting to like 30 40 years old and being like fuck i've wasted my life up until now like and then they have like a midlife crisis where they're like, fuck, who am I? The fuck am I going to do for the next 40 years? Blah, blah, blah. Like everything like that. Like why can't you, why can't you have a midlife crisis at 21? Mm. 
where you're like, cool, okay, this is who I am. This is who I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to do. And then, bang, you're like, your life is just like an upwards freight train from then on. Mm. Rather than being like in a, like a tiny three-wheeled car driving on the most precarious, twisty mountain road to try and find the greatest road in the world like to try and find that smooth like road of life and you don't get to the end of that twisty road until you're 40 like fuck that yeah yeah this idea that kind of like the the age is associated with success Mm. or or self-development it's like uh, yeah there is most likely a correlation with age and wisdom and experience yes 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 yes. but while we're here while the present is here why can't we attain some of these feelings now Mm, absolutely it's like something you got to meditate on something you really got to kind of sit back and think about it's very thought provoking and it's um that death uh what do you call death visualization deathbed visualization deathbed visualization that's your coach kind of gave you that yeah did you how did he deliver that like lying down i know and then he's speaking but like Mm -hmm. how did you get to the point where you even receptive to that because that's an intense thing that a lot of people do not want to think about yeah oh 100 percent. like it um the first time i did it i had already coached with him for a few years so So rapport trust absolutely yeah so when he when he mentioned it when he's like cool this is what we're going to do i was like yeah sick like let's do it did it for the first time and i was like it was it was fuzzy to be honest like couldn't quite get there had a vague message and things like that the journaling process was like short and things like that and then i think that was the third time i did it on the weekend same one the very same yep yeah, wow. exactly the same Got How, what's it. the time apart from these ones uh so the first time i did it was probably two years ago yeah and then the second time i did it would have been yeah almost a year ago so wow. it's probably been a year have you compared them yeah for sure. Like the, the oh no, sorry, there would have been a year's difference between the first and the second, and then maybe six months between the second and the third. What made this so different? So in the second one, I had a very similar like image pop up, but there was bits where I just sort of where it was like vague and skipped over, like the um, the message was like one thing that I was super clear on with the third one. Whereas in the second one, it was like, mm, is it is it strength? Do I want to be remembered for strength? Or is it like when we visualize the, the plaque in the cemetery, the word didn't come up for mm. me. I was like- it Takes mm. time sometimes. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. And like, okay. if, you're not, if you're not trusting it, if you're not allowing it to come, if you're just like, fuck this, this doesn't work. Nothing, it won't work. Mm. Like you have to allow it and trust it for sure. So in that, in that third one everything was just super clear because i was like cool i'm just gonna allow whatever to fucking happen to happen whatever comes up that's what's meant to come up whereas in the second one i I don't think i fully allowed it and i don't think i fully trusted it so in terms of like the difference between the second and third in the same sense there wasn't much difference but at the same time it was huge mm. for sure how was your wife's experience with it did she do it too yes yeah she was in uh the last two times that i've done it she's been in the same room doing the exact same time mm. like it's so fucking interesting because when we did it on saturday um when we got our clear message and everything like that and then you go back to okay now if you lived a life with this message and you like live your life with purpose with blah 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 doing this and this and this and yada yada who is standing beside your bed in the hospital we both had like almost the exact same people wow both had two kids standing next to the bed as well and that's something you obviously both so want we, for the future absolutely yeah yeah like we've spoken about kids before mm. and we're like yeah cool like two kids for sure like that'd be cool in the future and then when we did the deathbed visualizations we were like talking about it afterwards that's and we were cool just, man you're we were on the same like, page yeah we were just like fuck we're having kids yeah <laughs> so do yeah. you have a timeline on that 
because that's a pretty it's a pretty big life decision yeah well uh we just recently bought a caravan so okay. we're going to be traveling around australia um damn yeah we literally leave in like two weeks that's why you sold the gym yeah explain that okay so i'm we kind of sk- that kind of skipped yeah, ahead <laughs> that's the answer to it <laughs> yeah right yeah so it was your, it was your family it was like co-owned with your family with your parents is that right no no i i owned it yeah myself. okay yeah um take us back to that was three years ago you had your own gym yep um in mafra mm-hmm. now what drove the decision to you sold it yeah the, sold, it. sold the gym so yep. someone else owns it now yeah what drove that decision to, to sell it it was a very tough decision for sure yeah um it's a career you've devoted many years to yeah like i was like like it was exactly what i wanted to do for sure you knew yeah i knew i was just no like hesitation. fuck yeah like yeah. I, I want my own place like i'm gonna, gonna do it like this and everything like that yep and like in my mind i think i sold it a year ago wow yeah so you'd already mentally Men- checked out in some ways yeah like yeah. and it showed for sure yeah like there was just it there was just like nothing happening i wasn't progressing it forward at all it just sort of went into a lull mm. like and like i love it don't get me wrong like loved it it was one of the best experiences of my life for sure but then once i realized what i really wanted to do like i needed to like if anything i needed to find myself before anything because i feel like it almost became like i was trapped in there like every day i was in there at like 4 30 and i would leave at eight o'clock and then tuesday i'd get in there at 4 30 because you're the owner o'clock. the coach you like you run everything yeah i was admin like i was the owner admin coach cleaner like so you didn't just is it for money's sake that you didn't hire many staff around you to do those roles oh it, it came into it for sure like for a long time like at the start we had uh there was four of us working there and then it dropped off to two which was me and the guy that owns it now jesse and then we picked up more staff and there was four of us working in there and everything was going really well and then i was just like man i want to get out and see the world like Mm. i want to i want to experience some shit like i want to travel and like i want to find who i really am like at the core and yeah i had a conversation with my coach and i was like yeah cool like um with you know with the stuff that i had attached in the gym if i was just to hire a manager and i still had that attachment there where i was still like you know worrying about what's going on and like you know making sure there's like making sure the members are loving the place and everything like that i feel like i wouldn't be able to grow as much as what i wanted to because i still had that attachment there yeah you'd be away Mm. but you wouldn't be as mentally away right yeah exactly yeah so then i was like cool fuck like maybe i'll sell it like maybe i'll just wipe my hands and be done with it Mm. and yeah then had a conversation with jesse like the other guy that worked there and yeah he brought up the conversation like i hadn't told him about selling it or anything Uh, like and then yeah stars aligned all Mm. of a sudden we're in the staff room and he's like yeah like got plans to you know have my own space and like you know in the next few years you know want to get my own stuff like up and running and do it like this and it's an just, opportunity and my my i'm just like no fucking way are we having this conversation right yeah. now and i'm like do you want to buy this one and straight he, up yeah i was like buy this one and he's like what i'm like you can buy this one if you want it i'm like i'll sell it to you if you want to buy it and he's like fuck uh uh all right yeah let me <laughs> let me go talk to like I'll talk to my people and I was like, yeah, I'll organize my people and everything. Like, and then, yeah, within like a couple of weeks, we're just like, cool. Like, damn, that's great. Let's make it happen. That's so awesome. like, yeah, it, it, everything just like, and it was so interesting. Like as soon as I made the decision in my head to sell, everything just like fell into place. Like it was nuts how much better I felt once I'd made the decision and it was done. Like, oh, like mental well-being? Oh, yeah, 100%. The weight lifted off you, huh? Yeah. This is what it sounds like. Yeah, for sure. And like my, just like my whole perception of life changed. I was like, fuck, I don't have to be like tied down and like, 
attached to this place anymore. Not that it was a bad experience. Like, it, I am so fucking grateful that the whole experience happened. Like, I, I thanked the experience so much in my head. Like, so many fucking times. Because, mm. I mean, if I didn't, if I didn't experience those those three years in the gym, that I, I probably I wouldn't be where I am now. I probably wouldn't be doing what I am now because of those experiences. So for for those three years to happen, I'm so fucking grateful for it. And like, in terms of business, it taught me a fucking lot for sure, yeah. for sure. But now with what I want to do, I mean, it made sense for me to sell. What is the the next step then? Because selling a, having a gym one is like, I can understand why you feel tied down. I think Christian, who's, you know, credit again to Woodford Sports Science Consulting, Christian for allowing me to do this here, but like he has done, it can be such a mental... Mm. physical almost like a burden at times for sure um it's almost like sometimes having a physical brick and mortar business sometimes isn't worth it depending on what lifestyle you want Mm, exactly and so you come to that decision now now what is because i know it still definitely sounds like health wellness changing young men's lives specifically still at the forefront of your mind so how Mm. does that transition happen what is that next step for you so what is the next step now yes is it caravan travel i need space from it i need want to be with my wife i want to see this country yeah it, it it's absolutely that for sure i think it it's gonna be that like just having because we haven't had our own space since we've been together we've always lived with housemates and things like that so our our space was our bedroom so like our space was this much yeah. of the the house we lived in yeah and then of course um like my wife worked at the gym as well so she was working with me as well so it wasn't really our space so for us to really for us to grow our relationship and you know grow our, con- our connection as well it was like cool let's let's buy a caravan and let's travel let's mm-hmm. take our dogs and let's just let's live and like it makes sense for for everything that aligns to our lives as well like let's live sustainably as fuck let's get a caravan and like just travel we'll free camp and we've, we'll we'll like you know just see what the fuck is out there mm. because i mean i've lived in mafra my whole life yeah it's true man have you been interstate yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Like I've only ever travelled up the east coast. Have so. you been internationally? Uh, yeah, I've been to Thailand and Bali. Okay. Yeah, but even then, like, that's nothing. Yeah. So like, there's to, a lot out there. Yeah, and like, just to experience it and like, just to meet people and like everything like that is going to be huge because I feel like if you're if you live in one place for too long, you 100% will what's the word you will attach to the the values and like yeah the the beliefs yeah absolutely for sure for sure and like like math is a great town for sure like the community there is like insane for a town of four thousand people like we can fucking rally hard and like we can come together as a group so well for sure but then there, there comes a point where you will outgrow your environment or you'll get to a point where it's just like, cool, yeah. like I've got some fucking growing to do, but I can't if I stay here. Yeah. And yeah, that was, that, was, that, that was probably the biggest factor in the decision to sell, for sure. And to like, to move into, you know, uh, buying the caravan and, you know, wanting to travel and then have the online business of coaching men as well. Yeah. So what does that look like with your online uh, coaching and mentorship? Yep. Like, how do you facilitate that? Because obviously, you can definitely run a successful business online. Mm, for um, sure. And remotely. Yeah. But what does that look like functionally for you? Mm. So, like, obviously, there's going to be some challenges traveling and, you know, working from the laptop and everything like that. Um, but, yeah, like, I mean, I'm open to the challenge for sure. Like, I... Is it just like one or, like... Does it even matter if you continue offering your services remotely? Like how much does that even matter compared to the experience that you want of like mm. traveling with your wife? That's a good question. 
for sure something to think about maybe yeah like because if you want to work with young men like what is that what does that next step look like does it mm. mean offering remote like camps and, or, or continuing like yeah, small groups uh, and events consultations is definitely, definitely on the table for sure down yeah, the track yep, absolutely um, but at the moment the structure of the of the the coaching program and the mentorship is in a group setting so taking it back to those like the tribal times of getting men like together in a group so it's like a it's a 16 week program the group program then there there is there is the chance to work with me one on one which is where we like we will go deep yeah it's like 12 we- it's like 12 weeks of like we're on the phone like every single fucking week and we're in contact all the time like we you're going to fucking change in those 12 weeks mm. no matter what in the the main part of the program the group setting so that's a 16 week program mentorship where same thing like where we're jumping on a group call every week and how many like, guys because if a group call like you can get pretty like is it like because if it's like oh, a group of 10 or like, 20 is like yeah, yeah i can yeah. get pretty crazy with a, with yeah, a call like like it, it's set at 10 yeah um potentially it could get bigger down the track um i've only just like launched so getting into group calls has definitely been a new challenge for me but i fucking love it what do those 16 weeks look like how did you structure it so um have you hit have you heard of the hero's journey yes right so the 16 weeks is based around the hero's journey very nice yeah uh, joseph so, campbell right yeah yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. so um i want to see that diagram <laughs> yeah pull it up so basically the first uh the first four weeks is based around physical and mental the second four weeks is emotional Mm-hmm. the third four weeks is spiritual and then the last four weeks is leadership and embodiment interesting mm. i really like that structure yeah now how have you how have you taken those themes and applied them into a practical sense like yep. what are the guys actually doing yeah so uh in the physical and mental first four weeks like this is literally where um like they're getting all their their training programs they're getting the nutrition and everything like that and then they get tasks every week to tick off to it so i know that they've done it okay so what could that look like yeah absolutely so in the like for example on the group webinars i'm teaching them like content and it all based based around strength like uh their definition of strength physically will dictate what their program looks like because mm. i'm not going to give the same program for to a strong man for someone who's like a marathon runner or something like that. There's so, specific goals. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Um, and then like, you know, their their task might be to get into the gym three times that week or whatever the hell it is. Depending on the person, the task will be different. But there's there's a there's a general um, task for everyone each week. And then one is the I teach them the hero's journey on the first call. Just that theme and concept? The theme, yep, the theme of the hero's journey, right? So um and because i just believe that it's so important for them to know that the hero's journey for mm. sure because like i tell them like you're going to be going on a hero's journey you go on hero's journeys every single day like we i teach them that and then i give them uh literally the first task is i give them a, a sheet for them to fill out on where they think they are in their own hero's journey in their life at the moment from every everywhere from call to adventure to to uh, the abyss transformation. Yep, crossing the death, threshold, rebirth. Like that. Yep, 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 for sure. So, where they think they are in their life, in their own hero's journey right now, and then I sort of like I elicit it, and then we work out. Cool, like you're here, you're at this point in the hero's journey, like you're you're crossing the threshold. For example, blah 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 blah. Like, what were your, what were your calls to adventure? What were your calls to action? Because I might have been one of their calls to action to change their life so they might literally be at crossing the threshold when they jump on the program because that's them you know um that's them crossing the threshold into their you know trying to get their elixir or whatever it is yeah and it usually i I find it's usually when people make that call to adventure to take action it usually comes from a pace place of pain a place of like you have really hit a low Mm. and it's it's really crazy about human beings and how we wait usually we only take massive action when shit hits the fan yeah i'm like hold on 
yeah, sometimes that's absolutely necessary to go through. Yeah. But at the same time, we know suffering, pain, and adversity is coming. Let's prepare for that fucker. Mm, exactly. For sure. Please go on. Um, yeah, so the first task is literally them working out where in the hero's yeah. journey they are. Self-awareness. Absolutely, yeah, self-awareness for sure. So those, those first four weeks is, um, so I teach them about, the first four weeks is definitely based around awareness for sure. Just getting them aware of where the fuck they are and who the fuck they are. Mm. And then we can build steps on, cool, like this is what we're going to need to do to get you strong. This is the areas that you're going to need to work on. These areas you've got a pretty good stranglehold on. Like these areas you're good, these areas, this is what we're going to focus on. In the second week, uh, I teach them about RAS, so the reticular activation system. Heard of that? Yes, I have. Yep. Yeah. So I teach them It's been a all while about, since I heard about that. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, so like, explain that for those who don't understand that. So the I'll reticular activation system is basically how you see reality and everyone's reality is going to be different to the next person. And it's all based off your filtering system. So the way you filter information. So you can take in... And if my coach watches this, I hope I get this right because this is who taught it to me. Um, you will take in 400 billion bits of information per second. It's a lot of bits. Absolutely. That's a lot of fucking Bro, even if that's like two zeros off, it's still a fuckload. Oh, yeah. But then that gets filtered through your reticular activation system down to 2,000 bits of information right. that you're conscious of. Yep. So That's right. Yeah. So it like 92 i think it's 92 to 97 percent of everything that we know is completely unconscious to us mm, so like filtered through yeah because it's yeah it gets filtered through your eyes and we're only conscious of yeah those 2000 bits of information so i'm reading here uh it's a network of neurons located in the brainstem that project anteriorly which is the front side to the hypothalamus to mediate behavior and direct uh, direct activation, awakeness, and desynchronization of cortical uh, EEG patterns. But the point is, um, directs and mediates behavior, I think is the main mm. uh, principle there. Go on. So you will filter information based off your values, your beliefs, and everything like that, different to how I filter information. So if you were to look at blue sky, you'll you'll filter that and create an image different to what I might create an image in my own head. So you'll create what's called um, internal representation. Mm. You create an internal representation based off your filtering system and then that'll give you a state slash mood and that can change your physiology. So for example, you look at a blue sky and blue sky might make you happy and your, phys phys your physiology, your state, your mood will change based off your filtering system. Mm. Whereas someone else might be different. So it's like an association thing. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So teaching them that and the fact that everything that, you know, they can create their own reality and that you can, you know, you can, you can change your state or mood based off your physiology and everything like that as well. Because like if you're, I mean, one exercise I've done before is like if you were to slump your shoulders, like drop your head down, mm -hmm. look at the floor, mm -hmm. try and feel happy. Mm. Like, it doesn't work. And it's like, it goes the other way as well. Like if you were to sit up tall, shoulders back, like look up slightly, smile, the biggest smile you can in the world, try and feel depressed when you're like that. Amy Cuddy has a great TED talk on this that you may have seen or m a lot of people have seen how your body language shapes your endocrine response, yes. your well-being, your mood. Absolutely. And it's like such a powerful thing to change. Mm. And like, if you want to have an immediate effect in your physiology and well-being, look at your body language. Absolutely, yeah. So is it, yeah, I have a big focus on hero's journey and Raz in those first initial weeks. So you're looking, or will you look at the specific of like, okay, our body language is key. Let's notice the unconscious, subconscious behaviors. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because like we, no doubt, there's going to be some guys in there who have no idea about this at all. So even teaching them that, even teaching them to like fucking stand up straight with their shoulders back with yeah. their shoulders back is yeah. going to be huge for them yeah. and like anyone listening right now like try it like that's rule one of Jordan Peterson's new book stand up straight with your shoulders back yeah exactly um, such a fundamental principle and behaviour mm. so yeah just making blokes aware of 
their own fucking reality, really. And then there's a physical component? Yes, in absolutely. In that program? So, yeah, for sure. So the physical component is they're, they're getting their training program. So I write their programs out individually. Uh, they get exercise demonstration videos as well. So every single exercise is on their program. There's a video link attached to it. Mm. So they can watch every single video, uh, every single exercise that's on there. It's like a tutorial. Uh, as well as that, they're getting weekly check-ins for their exercise program as well. Sure. So like they're, they're sending me what they've done. I'm critiquing it or whatever the hell. And then their next week programs is made up from there plus their nutrition as well so get them on to uh my fitness pal and then like giving them their nutrition plan from there they're plugging in all their calories and everything like that daily and then of course like um you know you can just be friends with them on my fitness pal and they're sharing their stuff and i can see what they're eating as well so in terms of the four, first four weeks yeah they're getting their training program um they're getting in the gym they're getting the nutrition and everything like that plus they're going to be fucking aware of what's going on in their life as well and then what's the next chapter in that? Because then it's the emotion. How do we build the emotional and spiritual? Yeah. So and the, the, the emotional um, block will be a big one. So that's where I'm teaching them how to be like emotionally strong. Like teaching them that, you know, the, the stuff that's happened in their life, everything that's happened in their life so far has got you to who you are right now. So no matter what the fuck you've done, no matter like no matter what you've done i don't care because it's got to where you are right now and it's got you onto it's got you onto this program which is a huge fucking step and it's more so teaching them to be thankful for that teaching them to be grateful for that as well as that just <laughs> helping them become aware of like their emotions and what emotions actually are and yeah, not not so it, it's going to be teaching them how to control their emotions so um, what I found is common in men is outbursts of anger and everything like that when you know stuff doesn't go their way. So definitely teaching them to control that as well, and t- just helping them and like helping them learn that they can be fucking sad if they want to, and like they can be angry if they want to, and you're, you're allowed to you're allowed to have emotions mm. for sure, mm. and just changing their. Uh, perception of what being an emotionally strong man is because being an emotionally strong man doesn't mean you fucking cry every day like it, you're like it, man in the last like six months I would have cried like 15 times mm-hmm. for sure like for a multitude of things like on like Saturday just gone at this at the coaching event like I bore my eyes out twice like in the deathbed visualization and then there was another visualization we did where I was just like bald. I think and when I hear that, I'm like, that's even courageous of you to admit that. When I think young men just admit their fears and insecurities mm. and vulnerabilities, it helps allow other people to do the same. Absolutely. And so like, thank you for at least being honest enough to share that because you have to be the change you want to see in the world. Absolutely, for sure. And like, yeah, becoming vulnerable is a huge thing. And like, yeah, vulnerable and honest is a, a massive thing. And I go through that in the program as well. Definitely in that emotional block is like teaching them to become vulnerable and like showing them that no matter what the fuck they've done, they're a strong fucking man. And they're, they're here right now because of everything that they've done in their life and that they're able to change that. Yeah. Forward. You can be the, per- your potential is huge and you can be yeah. the person you want to be. Absolutely. I don't believe that you can do anything you want in this life. I don't believe that anybody can be a LeBron James or be a professional athlete, but I do believe you can try to mm. be that. I do believe that you can be, cliche, your best. I believe you can get on the path to do that and have hugely transformational experiences. For sure. And so people unlock their potential. Absolutely. And that's where the gold is. Mm. That's it. And then... In the spiritual block? Yeah. So I know a lot of people don't dive into spirituality. I know I had a perception that I was just like, I'm not going to, like, well, I don't want to learn about that. Like, that's God and shit like that. But then once I learned that, like, you know, spirituality is just basically connecting. It's different for everyone. Yeah. For me, it was 
you know connecting to my higher self and just listening because you always have the answer to any question that you ask you you always have the answer there's there's probably questions you've been asking yourself your whole entire life and the answers are there you just can't potentially you just can't accept them yet so in the spiritual block it's just it's teaching them to listen like listen for the answers and accept that whatever you hear is what you're meant to hear and yeah i believe that that in itself is that that's my definition of spirituality anyway connecting to your higher self connecting to your higher self for right. sure yeah absolutely and you know we we ask ourselves questions in our heads every day like if it's something as simple as like what am i going to have for lunch today to you know on the other end of the spectrum like oh who am i as a human being you're gonna have the answers as long as you listen because like we talked about like you know 92 percent of everything we do is unconscious so if we can tap into our unconscious mind and find out what's in that 92 percent the answer is going to be there for sure so teaching men to become spiritually strong by just listening like how do you create that you know a lot of things a lot of people struggle with that how do you create the space for people to listen Mm. It's is there techniques? Is there is there practices? Is it a meditation? Yeah. So there's there's a there is a meditation um, aspect in the program as well. Um, like there's a, there'll be a lot of meditation in there for sure, especially and breathing techniques as well that we spoke about. Um, and getting them, yeah, getting them into that relaxed state and just being just being with themselves just just being in general like in terms of how i'm creating the space for that by the by that stage by the stage we're in that spiritual block they're going to be mentally strong and they're going to be they're going to be definitely on the way to being mentally strong and emotionally strong so putting the spiritual block there is it it made sense because like they're going to have stronger attachment to their emotions and they're going to be stronger mentally as well so getting them to ask and receive in a sense from their higher self and from their unconscious mind will be a lot easier for them in that block for sure ask and receive and use meditation as a tool to get to that point Mm, Mm. absolutely that sounds like a very well-rounded but also like well structured you're kind of going up in layers from mm. from uh, self-awareness to physical then to mental emotional spiritual yeah and you come out on the other end a different human being yeah absolutely well get so that's something i imagine you want to continue to help facilitate young men's lives for sure is that is that yeah where you want to take up most of your time working in those types of programs yeah absolutely yeah for sure like yeah this is like this is this is my life now this Mm. is what i do and like the program's created basically off how that 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 is literally the that was the structure of my life at first it was first it was yeah first it was physical and i was like fuck yeah go hard in the gym be strong and i'm like oh fuck i've got all this shit in my head and i don't know what to do with it like I'm just like constantly in my head like all day and then I worked on like the mental side of things and then my emotions were like all over the shit couldn't hold down a relationship or anything like that I literally uh, I like dated I dated the same personality in in three different girls back to back interesting because I was like I had no idea how to I had no idea how to be in a relationship I had no idea how to like emotionally connect with someone so then I worked on the emotional side of things and then I found like the most beautiful fucking woman in the entire fucking world and now we're married like it's just insane how it works but you had to be ready for that oh yeah like but sometimes you're not though but at the same time you had to get through that stuff mm, for sure absolutely and like yeah I did a lot of work on myself like I literally I, I have been through my own program yes and then I'm like well fuck if this is what it can do 
for me then imagine what it can fucking do for everyone else uh, you know that joseph campbell's hero's journey i feel like it is something that you go through multiple times throughout your life yeah oh for sure like you know? this podcast would be a hero's journey mm, it's sure. a cyclical thing yeah like you can have a hero's journey that goes for your entire life and you can have hero's journeys that go for five minutes yeah you, you could have multiple hero's journeys every single day interesting i never sure. thought about it on a, on a daily basis i usually think about it as like a macro like mm. more like not midlife crisis crises crises whatever it is um but like big life decisions but i guess why not why can't you apply it to a daily yeah, thing you know sure. you, you you can see it applied however you wish mm. and so how long do you do you guys want to travel around australia for because i think that's what a great thing to do yeah we don't know we've sort of we've the the one year sort of um yeah conversations popped up most commonly but we don't know you just take it however yeah, yeah. we might hate it and come back in two weeks right i mean well, <laughs> after that remote traveling do you have a vision of kind of i don't imagine it's open up another gym I, I, I mean maybe it is a small place like the size of this room type yeah. thing, like a private yeah gym of your own mm. i i mean i'm open to it i haven't really thought past the next couple of years because i'm yeah. sort of like cool like this 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 coaching program the journey of strength is what i want to focus on yeah that's what it's called journey of strength um and yeah traveling like spending time with my wife and mm. the dogs and then making like, babies yeah making babies bro <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna take up some time that's gonna man. take time yeah <laughs> so yeah i mean beyond that we we definitely want a house um and like yeah our our plan is like on our travels if we if we find somewhere that we mm. love why not let's fucking set up shop here like yeah yeah so Wait, but there's a, a it's in a beautiful country that I think not enough of us locals, including myself, see enough of. Mm, yeah. Before we we always look outward at, at the, all these other amazing countries. It's like, hey, yeah. fuck man, we're very we got lucky some to good live here. Shit here. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. It's an amazing country. So I'm excited. I'm excited to just like go to a town and for some local to be like, have you checked out this. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, it's it's not on my Google Maps, bro. Like, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's so, the it's the local guide Google yeah, Maps. Yeah. Exactly. So like I'm fucking so excited for that for sure are we oh that's two things um in the start of the conversation we talked about you know you don't play video games anymore you have to distance yourself from that mm -hmm. but like anything do you think you might come into it because well i'll give i'll frame the conversation for me i was similar i went so hard at it, the fact that i enjoyed playing video it was an outlet for me from like all I did was play basketball and obsess myself. It was yep. nice to disconnect. But then I was like, you play like NBA 2K type yeah, thing, right? Yeah. You'd play the same thing you're obsessed about. But I went in the route of like, all right, I can make, um, I'm going to make a YouTube channel about it and just record myself playing. You know, I always talk to myself when I play, so I'm yep. going to record myself. And then that's another outlet to make some serious money, influence, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. But then I had to distance myself from it, you know, because I got serious about life. I can't justify spending time there like yourself mm. and being serious about all these other things yeah because it's gonna it takes away from it as long as i find other ways to experience joy exactly. and fun right for sure if i didn't have that maybe that would be a good outlet mm. but the question is now for me i see the allure to it i look at it and i'm like i can't touch it right now yeah. Ma maybe in 10 years you know what i'm saying like when i've done x y and z type mm. thing do you think you can get to a point where do you see yourself ever getting to a point where you can reintroduce these old things that served you in one part of your life and enjoy them in like a non-addictive way because you see you don't play video games anymore and it sounded like you, did, you weren't going to ever touch them again mm. do you think there will be a future where you can experience the joy of this outlet um yeah in the future mm. however many years from now because i'm sure you, your kid might yeah ask for it or true this or that i mean it's interesting it's an interesting question for sure i've never thought about reintroducing it because i was just like cool like i'm done like well, it's, that's it. it's always going to be why what's the purpose of this thing mm. right um and so if you can't answer that definitively like it, it doesn't have it anymore for me then that's makes sense mm. but for a lot of people it has this huge fun joy and even social element 
to escape the world and reality, which I think is why movies and TV shows and Netflix mm. and all these things are so popular is because you can escape your reality mm. and enter another universe. True. And so it's like, do you think you can develop a healthy relationship with those outlets? Mm. It's a good question. Like, I believe I probably could develop a healthy re- relationship with video gaming again but I do believe that I would have definitely developed healthy relationships with other outlets that's almost like replaced it right yeah for right, sure because there's so much fucking amazing shit in this well, world yeah and like fuck I don't know what I'm gonna learn when I travel I might yes. we might go to like pick up new hobbies yeah we might go to Alice Springs and like some Aboriginals might teach me some cool dance shit yeah like, and then I'll just like practice that in my spare time yeah like I don't know yeah yeah I might take up surfing like there yeah like I've never surfed before in my life so there you go yeah I'm sure that's something you'll try so unless yeah I'm gonna have other outlets for sure it makes sense I mean what's so exciting to me is that there's so much Mm. so much to do when I was a kid I used to complain and I look back at my younger self be like what the fuck are you doing but of course you're a kid before I was before I got obsessed about basketball you're bad I'm bored Mm. what do I do yeah I'm bored I haven't said that in 10 years yeah bro I got there is so much shit that I want to try and do but it's like you have to be careful with where you spend your time yes 100% but is that how you feel sometimes where you're like oh I want to I want to try this and this and this oh yeah like right now all I'm thinking about is surfing right I'm just like oh fuck surfing would be sick and I'm like fuck gonna get a skateboard i'm like fuck i'm gonna start skating and shit and it's like whoo calm down yeah 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 yeah. calm down like it's good though to have that like wide-eyed view mm, of like to try different shit hello jeff um but back to jeff do you mind closing that door please thank you sir um environment uh plant-based yes you commented saying that one of your biggest reasons for doing it it sounds like plant-based was the environment Hmm. right environmental impact um when my i've I've really tried to tease this out and i've tried to do a lot of research on it and try to really understand it and and it's a complex thing Hmm. right i'll see these graphs and i'll be like oh that doesn't seem complex at all that seems very simple it seems like the meat industry and the agricultural industry create the most emissions but then I'll, i'll look at articles kind of arguing against that and saying hey well it depends on the way we analyze the carbon emissions from x y and z because there's all these different types of analysis Mm. that you can do so i'm like fuck man this is actually this is not simple thing at all right yeah um but i always want to learn more and understand more so how have what have you learned about the environmental impact that uh of the agriculture meat-based industry that pushed you towards nudge you towards a plant-based diet yeah like my like reduction in buying packaged goods oh that's huge on the plastic top. yeah oh absolutely. my like, goodness uh huge yeah that is the biggest one and that's the one that doesn't discriminate because i lived in singapore for four months and these motherfuckers will have carry bags for their coffee cups plastic carry bags for their coffee cups they will cover like mangoes and fruits in like foam in, like plastic like imagine yeah, like a right. raw fruit right it's now covered in like half of plastic it's like this very unnecessary yeah right huge one go on yeah like that one was massive yeah for sure for sure um and just knowing like we spoke about factory farming yes like i know now by not eating meat like i'm not supporting that for sure 100 percent. yeah like it, I mean, I'll say this: if I knew, if I knew how to hunt, mm. I would go out and I would hunt my own meat. Now, this is an interesting okay? conversation, but I don't know how to do that. So, the way that I can reduce my impact on the environment is by going plant-based, mm. like and being vegan. Like, I, w- I would eat meat if I knew how to fucking hunt it and kill it ethically and eat it like that for sure. <sighs> Great point, and I think that is something that's. Um, really resonated with me. I've been watching I've been watching this uh, documentary on Netflix called Meat Eater, um, and seeing how these these guys will like professional hunters will they'll bow hunt, mm. 
and then they'll use rifles and seeing how they do it and how Rogan talks about it and um, Cameron Hayes mm. and then there's the Australian guy I can't remember his name but it's a very alluring thing that I'd love and I will try one day mm. the skill of learning how to bow hunt for sure and then tracking your own food I think it gives you a very I can't imagine but I can imagine the deep emotional and spiritual connection you must get from stalking this animal for days and days mm. killing it making peace with it I think it's a very I don't know I've never killed an animal but I imagine it's a very hmm you connecting with this other sentient being for sure and I think what we disconnect from is that this food on my plate I'm disconnected from it mm -hmm. people who are against eating uh, hunting but eat meat confuse me a little bit because all we're doing is we're hiring the hitman yeah exactly. and often we're hiring a hitman who is sadly uh, keeping animals in, in very inhumane torturous conditions so what can, we, what can we do about that well some of the stuff I'm, I'm looking at it's interesting to see how even the carbon emission greenhouse effects of changing from a factory farmed standard American um, sourced meat diet to organic grass fed mm. ethically raised meat it's huge big difference yeah suddenly now the discrepancy between a plant based and meat isn't anywhere near as big yeah and it's like okay maybe we can't get the whole world on the plant based but maybe we can get everybody pushing at yeah at least shift it to to this to for sure ethically raised yeah grass fed for sure non-antibiotic absolutely like i feel like people people can only do the best they can with the resources they have for sure like i don't know how to hunt the decision for me was to not eat meat right unless like unless i unless i learn how to hunt and like you said unless i learn the skill of it and everything like that i'm probably i'm gonna continue to not eat meat for sure mm. but the conversation about eating the grass-fed you know, organically produced beef or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, whatever animal. Yeah, I've never really thought about that. Right. Like, it's definitely interesting for sure. And if we, like, man, if we can shift people from the, the factory inhumane setting of uh, animals to the, the grass-fed, organically raised animals, then that in itself is a huge shift I think we should put pressure on each other I feel like the, the one of the best things you can do is, one is go to your local butcher what are you going to do you're going to support your local community mm -hmm. great number two a local butcher is going to you're going to know where it comes from you're going to maybe ask them questions hey where's this come from almost always it's from local farms a couple of hours away we're very lucky in Australia to have that in Victoria a couple of hours away ethically raised grass fed is mm -hmm. almost assumed it's like of course it is um obviously not all but if you find a good one like let's get away or at least if you're in the supermarket right australia is very open with this stuff very health forward and health conscious mm. there's it's cheaper absolutely it's cheaper to get factory raised yeah we know right the unfortunate thing is some families just can't afford yeah like i said like you can only do the best you can with the resources you've got right if the resources that you've got only allow you to eat factory farmed meat so be it cool yeah but if the resources you've got allow you to go plant-based until you can afford to eat organically grass-fed beef sure yep do that i see us if we yeah absolutely I, I can definitely feel that argument especially if we're going from standard american diet um factory farms meat to like and we can't go in the middle with the organic and grass if mm. and we have to go plant-based sure 100 yeah. percent. like let's consider that conversation mm. um but let's do something yeah as individuals oh, for sure and i think the one that's probably had has the least emotion in it is plastic yeah right we know plastic ha is um I, I believe if i recall correctly like petroleum is a key ingredient in, in plastic creation mm -hmm. right so not only are we harming our environments when we um put it in the rubbish and it gets sent off um and it enters our oceans or we litter etc etc but creating the plastic uses emissions it yeah. uses um natural resources okay and so what can we do about that like if you 
Jacob Weatherly, if you had like one thing that could change, one decision that a person could make that could have the biggest impact on the on the on the environment, let's mm-hmm. go from a non-nutrition perspective to start with, right? More of a habit. Okay. What would you tell people? Buy a glass, keep cup. Nice. To drink out of glass. To drink out of glass. And continue to reuse that. Yeah. Just like as your water, your Voss bottle. One, yeah, you saw that, 100%. Yes. Like, I, I wish I could do the calculations on how much I have saved from not having to buy like a pump bottle of water every single day or anything like that. Like, I, one of the best investments I've made. Great idea. Yeah, one of the best. Reusable bottles, especially glass. Yeah, especially glass. And like, Plastic keep cups are good because you can reuse them over and over again, but they are made of plastic. So good if that's what you've got available. It's kind of awesome. good, better, best, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like anything. Like I do guess. what you can. Yeah, 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 for sure. But please do something. Yeah, exactly. Right. And like, I mean, it, it's fucking awesome now. Like single use plastics are becoming, they're like coming down, which is awesome. Like plastic bags and everything like that. Fucking so good. And like there was a huge uproar about uh, supermarkets ditching single-use plastic bags, but it's the norm now for people to just take their own bags into the supermarket. Yeah. Like no one remembers the the huge uproar of when the plastic bags got taken away, do they? No, because it's normal now for you to just take your bags into the supermarket. You adjust. Yeah. And you know what I see more than... And I've done this before. I'll like carry this shit out of the store so, because you forgot your bag. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, ah, oh, I gotta put shit in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, damn. And I don't want to buy a bag, right? Exactly. I actually don't want to, even mm. if they're reusable and they're better yeah, made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever. Um, but we're moving forward. Yeah. But like, <sighs> like we are, we're moving forward very slowly, Com- and compared to other countries, I do believe we are like behind in how much we can progress for sure. Like you look at somewhere, oh, where were we? We were reading the other day. I think it's Sweden or somewhere like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard those. Yep. yep. They're like, yep. they're off the scale yep. with what they're doing right now. Like in terms of, I think they have like, oh, I can't remember what the city is, but the whole bus network, the whole public transport network there now is electric. I do. Uh, it's, wow. it's something like that, or the majority of their buses, at least, are electric, which is insane. And like the the investment now for them, yeah, potentially would be high, but in the long term, I mean, it'll pay off for sure. Absolutely. And yeah. guess what? Now there's less particulates in the air. Now you're breathing better quality better. air. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It doesn't just help the environment. If you can give a fuck about the environment, what about your health? You want to live a bit longer? Mm. Because there's definitely research, strong research out there to show that people who live in more polluted cities, uh, there's a correlation association with uh, more death, yep. more illness, for sure, more respiratory issues. Absolutely. Right? I'm trying to find some infograph that can give me an explanation of uh, what Sweden is doing because I've seen similar stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anything like from a glass keep cup yep. to bamboo toothbrush. Bamboo? Just, yeah. Oh, I haven't heard of it. It's like reusable? Yeah, for sure. Or I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of a single use toothbrush, but I mean, <laughs> any. My, 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 <laughs> my bad. Those hotel ones. <laughs> yeah, oh, true. Okay. They're, those are shit ones. Yeah. Um, but I mean, most toothbrushes that you buy, mm. plastic or some form of plastic. So, wooden toothbrush or bamboo toothbrush, for okay. sure. Okay. Um, Glass glasses, wooden bamboo toothbrush. What else? Yeah, what else do we do? Oh, my wife found these uh, they're like it's like glad wrap but reusable really yeah so so you can it's like a um, you can clean it yeah yeah washable uh, I'm pretty sure they're like it doesn't um, when you scrunch it up you, cu- you can get it back a, back apart yeah yeah they're literally like a seal thing they come in different sizes so there's like really tiny to like huge so you can just cover your bowl and it's like a um, it's like an elastic-y type material so that it squeezes onto the bowl so you can just reuse what's ever in the bowl so you don't have to use glad wrap all the time yeah and i think they're um there's beeswax wraps as well so same thing it's just like a flat sheet of like beeswax that you can mold into the shape over the bowl so you can reuse the food as well nice yeah Uh, yeah i mean 
something, right? Something's better than nothing. Yeah, for sure. And if we can all, I think uh, what Adam Greentree, I see him done. He he hunts his own food, and I'll see him uh, on. I've seen him on his Instagram. He will be out in like way out hunting, yep. right, in parts of the world in Australia, and he'll have a bag and he'll pick up bags of rubbish and carry it back to where mm. he came from because he obviously feels very strongly about the environment he's in and, and, yeah. and you know I think alright what can we do there well not that I'm I'm not trying to virtue signal or be some type of hero but what I try and do what I do if I see a piece of rubbish and I see a visible bin I'm picking that up off the ground mm. and I'm putting and then I'm like okay great I can do one thing and then what if someone else sees that and they do it because they saw me exactly or if they heard me Exactly. And what's this trickle effect like you do with the, the menu yes, work? exactly. People think I'm only one person. Like, what can I do? You're only one person. Oh. What the fuck can't you do? Yeah, right? Like, you don't have to, like, th- this is the thing. You, to, to do better for the environment, you don't have to fucking vote for the Greens Party or own a Tesla. <laughs> like, right. just, yeah, like you said, just do. It's not a black and white thing. No, just do something. Yeah. Like, buy a glass keep cup right that does so fucking much you can't even imagine like mm. it can you imagine someone using if they're buying coffee every day it's 365 cups that they've used for the whole year yep times that by how long they drink coffee for for 50 years of their life if they buy it every single day mm-hmm. it's a lot of fucking cups for one person yeah so fuck if you, you if you do that <laughs> yeah. i'll say it yeah like, i mean imagine if you bought a glass keep cup that, done done like you don't have to buy another little plastic cup ever again Mm -hmm. and there's many examples of that and it's not trying to position ourselves like oh we're you're you're better someone than someone else because you don't do it it's like no not about us not about us because we're probably not going to live long enough to really see the serious ramifications of all this for sure but the people who come after us and I know it's a very kind of esoteric thing to think of. It's like, oh, it's hard to think of the future in that way. Mm. The people who come after you. It's very hard to con- conceptualize. Yeah. But find some way to inspire you or motivate yourself to do some type of positive change. Why, why, why not? Whatever works for you. That's how yes. like, one thing I think about. Exactly. Um, and when you go, I don't know, you've seen Thailand and Bali. When I went to hong kong and we were traveling down to this kind of this secluded beach um we hiked in and we could see on our way there through the rivers and creeks that man these places were littered with pollution mm. you know because you got seventeen thousand islands and 10 recycling plants throughout a whole of asia yeah and like no wonder right and they don't have the they don't have the strictest environmental policies mm. do they no and so you think Australia's a bit, but you should see some like Asia, bro. Yeah. Needs some, a lot of work, but it starts at the individual level. Absolutely. We all have the power to benefit the people around us and change our environment. For sure. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah. That's all I got. Mm. Like, this just popped in my head now. Like, the, the way they... Um, fruit and vegetables when they put it in that black paper tray and then they put it in like a vacuum sealed plastic mm. it's like mushrooms or something like that yes and on the other side of the aisle they've got all of the fresh mushrooms yes. sitting there it's like why couldn't you just do that um, with those ones mm, yeah and like all of the loose fruit and vegetables in that whole section in the supermarket is there for you to utilise you know what else though I think I want to make vegetable patch growing cool man like growing your own <laughs> vegetables i want to make that fucking cool yeah i just uh invested in um called a veggie pot it's an elevated you can build your own um vegetable patch you don't need to kind of build your own raised bed yeah okay. you can buy this and set it up and i and i got all the fertilizer and everything i needed and i plant some vegetables this is all new to me so it's mm-hmm. a new territory i'm like uh, you don't there's a couple reasons here one you're going to grow fresher food. It's not going to be pesticides on it. It's going to be pure, the freshest you can possibly mm-hmm. get. Okay, great. It's going to taste better. Yep. It's going to be better for you. It's going to be more nutrient dense. Great, great, great. It's going to be better for the environment because you're not supporting a huge conglomerate that is, have, one, they're using a lot of plastic and using a lot of transportation to move a lot of these foods and vegetables. 
another thing is how long are those fruits and vegetables on those on those shelves mm, right like, oh bro that is one thing that i'm so excited for traveling around australia is to, like if we're driving past on some like small secluded back road and there's some farm out there that's got a sign that says like strawberries yeah so many dollars upon it hell yeah i'm pulling over and i'm getting them yeah for sure like i'm so still i'm gonna be so excited to go to like a farm and be like yo what fresh veggies and fruit have you got yeah hell like, yeah can't wait for that it's kind of it's a little things you know we mm. all eat we all drink but it's like when you can um find opportunities to get the freshest most uh how do i say i don't know just tap into a bit of the uh what our ancestors did just mm. the freshest possible yeah sourced food exactly right and that's uh it's an exciting thing to to tap into instead of like did you taste the difference between a fresh tomato coming off the tree no pesticides and a store-bought perfectly round aesthetically pleasing <laughs> six-month-old but a tomato pretty yeah. different guys mm. pretty different huge difference for sure i think we've had a great conversation my man <sighs> yeah it's gone a lot of directions thank you is there anything yeah. else you want to touch on or, or and speak about oh, we've spoken about a lot hey yeah we can do that yeah we covered a lot of topics then yeah yeah how long have we been going for we have been going for two hours and 15 i've gone in nice love it where can people find you my man <laughs> no where can they find oh you? where can they find me they yeah. uh so uh instagram j-a-c-o-b underscore weatherly w-e-a-t-h-e-r-l-e-y it's a great name smooth thank name. you yeah thank you it works um <laughs> facebook page jacob weatherly coaching um add me on facebook jacob weatherly jacob um, weatherly yep thank you brother thank you so much love it to chat i'm glad we did this yeah me too glad i thank reached you. out thank you for inviting me appreciate it see ya <laughs>